गाइज वेलकम बैक टू टेक डोज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लुक एट फाइंड द पनिशमेंट नंबर ऑफ एन इंटीजर प्रॉब्लम विच इज फ्रॉम लीड कोड नंबर टू सिक्स नाइन एट अ गुड प्रॉब्लम टू सॉल्व आफ्टर सॉल्विंग दिस इज मैट्रिक्स चेन मल्टीप्लीकेशन यूजिंग रिकर्शन सो आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड अ वीडियो ऑन दिस यू कैन फाइंड द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो नाउ लेट्स रीड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन दिस प्रॉब्लम गिवेन अ पॉजिटिव इन टीजर एन रिटर्न द पनिशमेंट नंबर ऑफ एन The punishment number of n is defined as the sum of the square of all the integer i such that i lies in the range of 1 to n and the decimal representation of i square can be partitioned into contiguous substring such that the sum of the integer value of these substrings equals i now if you take an example for n equals to 10 then i will be ranging from 1 to 10 and then for every i value we have to check if it is following our given condition that means if i take let's say i equals to 1 then what will be the value of square of i it will be 1 only now can we uh, try to partition this substring i mean this particular string into substring into zero or more substring in such a way that the sum will be equals to 1 yes i can choose not to partition it and 1 will be equals to 1 so this one is valid so add 1 to the final answer of the punishment number now for i equals to 2 you just square it now for any i value greater than 1 you will not find i equals i square okay so in this case 4 is not equals to 2 and we cannot partition 4 because a single digit cannot be partitioned so this is not following our given constraint for 3 this will not be following our given constraint because 9 cannot be equals to 3 for 4 it will become 16 now 16 is definitely not equals to 4 and if you partition in the middle the sum will become 1 plus 6 which is 7 again not equals to 4 so this is also not following the constraint for i equals to 5 the square is 25 if you partition it again this the 25 is not equals to 5 7 is also not equals to 5 for 6 just square it up now 36 is not equals to 6 6 plus 3 9 is not equals to 6 so this is also not following for i equals to 7 if you just square it up it becomes 49 so 49 not not equals to 7 and uh, 9 plus 4 13 is also not equals to 7 so this is also not following so for i equals to 8 the 8 square is 64 64 not equals to 8 and if you just divide it 10 is also not equals to 8 so this is also not following for 9 it will be 81 81 not equals to 9 if you partition it uh, then 8 plus 1 is 9 which is equals to 9 so this is following so you have to add the square of 9 which is 81 to the final answer okay now you again try for 10 so 10 square is 100 now in how many ways can you partition now this is of length 3 so we can partition it like you take 100 and you divide it into two parts at this point 1 and double zero right and this double zero will be just zero and this will be 1 so 1 plus 0 will be 1 only or you could have partitioned it in another way in such a way that this will become 10 and the other party will become 0 isn't it so in this case 10 plus 0 is 10 and 10 is equals to uh, this 10 which is i and therefore this is valid so add 100 to the punishment number and if you keep adding it will be 182 why did i stop at 10 because the max and value was 10 here right and and that is how the answer is 182 so i hope the problem statement is clear now if you look at the constraint then the n value can go to maximum 1000 so you know that the square value can go to maximum of 10 to the power of 6 because i will be iterating for all the numbers from 1 to 10 to the power of 3 and for every i value you have to find i square and try to partition it in such a way that the sum becomes equals to i that i will be showing you in a while okay so whatever you do the total number of computations should be uh, less than 10 to the power of 8 so that your code runs within 1 second right now let's look at some observation which will help us solve our problem let's say that the n value is 100 if you find the n square it will become 10 to the power of 4 right so the digit expansion is in n we had three digits in n square we have five digits so in the worst case whichever number you choose as n your n square value will be expanding the number of digits by no more than two times you can just try it out in any number so this is the first observation now the next point is if your n value is let's say 1023 in base b any base of the number system then the number of digits in that base will be log n base b if you are thinking about the base 10 number system 
in which the problem is mentioned then the number of digits will be approximately log n uh, base 10 right so for any number n we have log n base 10 digits in the base 10 number system and therefore for the n square since you know that you will have maximum 2x number of digits right if x is the total number of digits in n then n square will have two times of log n base 10 which is approximately of order of log n right so this is for the digit counting now in the next observation let's say that our i value is equals to 36 let's say we have found the i square which came out to be 1296 and now our goal is to find if we can partition the i square into several substring which can be zero or more such that the sum of each substring as integer will be equals to i so in this case if you want to try out all possibilities of partition at what all points can you partition you can partition in between this 1 and 2 or you can partition between 2 and 9 or 9 and 6 so if the number of digits are let's say log n then the number of partition points will be log n minus 1 isn't it because the number of partition point will be 1 less than the string size you cannot partition at the end points that is not possible now in this case every partition point will have two choices so you can choose to put a partition between 1 and 2 or you can choose not to put a partition right so if you try out all possibilities of putting the partition for uh, n length you can say there are n minus 1 number of partition point or for n plus 1 length there will be n number of partition point therefore the total choices will be 2 to the power of n so if number of digits in n is log n then the maximum number of digits in n square will be 2 times of log n therefore the number of choices will be 2, 2 to the power of 2 times of log n which will again boil down to order of 2 to the power of log n right i think this point is clear now let's move on to the next point i will be showing you the recursion tree diagram of how uh, the partitions will actually happen for 1296 right and uh, this is the same as your matrix chain multiplication type now in this case i will be taking 1296 and i will be trying from partition point number one so i can run a for loop which will run for all the partition points so the partition point will run from let's say index 1 to index n right whatever is the index and then uh, if the number of digits are in terms of log n square then it will go to log n square and partition point plus plus why did i say log n square and not log n because if n was the number then n square is this number and the number of digits in a number which is n square will be equals to log of n square base 10 right so that is why i am running uh, from 1 to log n square and partition plus plus so if i see the first partition point i'll try to put a partition here and if you do that you get a number 1 on the left side 296 on the right side now there are two options take this 296 and add it with one get a value 297 and compare with your initial i value if you can check the i value was 36 here right so compare it with 36 if it is equal return true otherwise you keep trying out all possible partitions 297 is not equal to 36 keep trying the partition again you partition into left and right part so this becomes 2 this becomes 96 again you can do 1 plus 2 plus 96 or you can again partition here and check out this uh, 9 and 6 as all right now if you check out this 296 then you can choose not to put a partition point between 2 and 9 rather you can put a partition between 9 and 6 and you will get this recursion tree diagram you can follow all these recursion tree diagrams which i have made and you will see that if the length of the string is whatever like let's say the length of the string is uh, equals to 2 then the number of partition point will be 1 if the length of the string was uh, 3 number of partition point will be 2 okay if the length is 3 number of partition points are 2 if the length is 4 number of partition points will be 3 so the number of partition point will be defining the number of recursion tree diagram and this problem do not have just a single recursion tree diagram it is exactly the same concept as i had explained in the matrix chain multiplication recursion tree diagrams okay now in this case let's say that the i value was 526 and i have taken i square here and i am trying to partition it in such a way that the i square can become equals to i as the sum of substring right now i don't want to show you the answer here the point of this is to show you the partition points so if you look at 276 676 the length is 6 therefore there are 
five partition point from one to five. One, two, three, four, five, isn't it? So there are five possibilities here. If you want to cover all these possibilities, definitely you have to run a for loop. And let's say that I have chosen to partition at this third point. Then I'll get two seventy six and six seventy six. Again, you have two partition point in each of these cases. So you will try them all. And let's say we have picked the second partition point here. So I'm just choosing one partition point at every point of time. And still, the recursion tree diagram which I'm getting will be of the size two to the power of n. But this is not all, right? This is just for one partition point. choosing only one partition point but how many partition points do we have at any point of time n partition points right so that number of possibilities will be equals to n times 2 to the power of log n why 2 to the power of log n because n is considered as i and so n square will be this number right so the number of digits in n square will be log of n square base 10 right so you can put an n square here okay n is very small so you can just uh, keep it as it is so log of n square base 10 is the number of digits and uh, so the number of partition point will be one less than that but since one is a constant we can just drop it off so the number of digit will be log n square and so the total number of possibilities will be 2 to the power of that and since i am running a loop every time to choose the partition point it will be n times of 2 to the power of log n square right So the number of recursion trees will be uh, the number of partition point, which is equals to five for this node, two for this node, two for this node, right? So the maximum is five. That is why I'll be taking five. For the leaf node, we will have zero partition point. For any internal node, your partition point will be one less than the length. So here the length is two partition point one. Length is three partition point two. Length is six partition point five. Okay, I think this point is clear. Now let me show you a dry run. on this 1296 and try to see if this i square value if this i square value can match the i value equals to 36 right so what i'll do is i'll choose the first partition point because i will be looping over and choose the first partition point i will divide it into 1 and 296 now again keep dividing it until you find one possibility so i'll keep dividing based on the leftmost partition point so what i got here is 1 plus 2 which is 3 3 plus, uh, I mean this 9, which is 12. 12 plus 6, which is 18. So is this 18 equals to 36? No, it is not. So what I'll do? I will return a false value. I'll return a false value, right? And uh, this will also return a false value. Now at this 296, I will try something else. What I can try is, I can keep it, keep it like this and divide in some other way. And this will become 29, and this will become 6. And again, I can divide it as this will become 2 and this will become 9 isn't it again you try it out 1 2 9 6 again it will come out to be same i think 2 plus 1 is 3 9 plus 3 12 plus 6 18 not equal again you return false now since you have tried these two possibilities you will try with 29 6 and 1 so 29 plus 6 is 35 plus 1 36 which is equal right which is equal that is why you will be just returning true without trying out the other possibilities if it would not work then you will try the other possibility even in the previous case when we had returned false you will be trying after trying both the possibilities you will be trying uh, 96 with 2 and 1 and that will not be equals to i right so that is why i had skipped that point even if you try all the points from here then at the end after trying out both the partition point 1 and partition point 2 you will be trying 296 with 1 because maybe it the answer was 297 because maybe the i value was 297 so this is how the process of recursion will work we will be using the substring function to slice on all these points right the time complexity for this will be n into n into log n square where n is the total number of uh, loop values for i because i will be ranging from 1 to n so i know that one will always follow the constraint so simply i can just add it up and i can start the loop from 2 to n this n is for all possible partition point for any given number right and this log n square is actually for the number of digits in the n square value because what i am doing is i am performing all this action on i square isn't it so the worst case value of i is n so the worst case value of i square is n square that is why i have written here n square so the time complexity will be order of n square log n square the base will be 10 but it is a constant so that is why i have removed it 
the space complexity will be the depth of recursion and you know the number of digits is going to be the depth of recursion since n square is the number on which we are operating so the depth of recursion will be log of n square and that is the space complexity due to the call stack let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are starting with the number n and uh, i am assuming punishment number equals to one because i know that one will always be valid and i will be iterating from two and go to n so for every i number i will be finding i into i and convert it to string so that the substring operations are possible then i will be checking if it is valid that means if the given number i square let's say it is a b c in terms of digit if it can be sliced in such a way that the digits or whatever uh, number it creates the addition of it becomes equals to i if it is valid then i will add the i square to the punishment number and if, after trying out all the values from 2 to n I'll return the punishment number. If you check how I'm doing the validity check, in this case, I'm getting the square number, the position where I am currently. So I'm starting with zero. The sum value that I have seen till now, I'll be starting with zero. And the value, that means the value, the I value to which I need to match. So if we have gone out of bound, that means if my digit was 1, 2, 9, 6, and I have gone out of bound here, then that means I have tried certain slicing, isn't it? Maybe I have uh, tried certain slicing and I have generated the sum to be, let's say, equals to 36. Now, at this point, you have to match it with the uh, given value. That means the I value. Then if it is equals to I value, I need, I need to return true. And if it returns true, then it will be added to the punishment number. Okay. Otherwise, I need to try out all the possible partition point for the given number. And at every partition point, let's say uh, I was at position number 1 then at this point I can try to create a slice here and try to divide the numbers into two parts using the substring function and this toy is actually converting the string to integer okay and then again take both the parts update the sum value uh, with the sum plus current value wherever the slice is getting created this will be added to the given sum you see the current value is actually uh, taking the substring slice from the position to i plus 1 that means it is taking this slice 12 adding it and then updating the sum and making the next recursion call right so if everything is valid then it will be returning true otherwise if after trying all the possibilities if it cannot find even one valid recursion call then it will return false so this is the entire structure and uh, this is an exponential algorithm yes but it will work because the number of digits are very less so i hope you were able to understand this if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming videos see you guys in the next video thank you